Hello and welcome to the Pomerantz Mentor, sponsored by ProScan. And today's vignette will focus on the role of contrast in seizures. The, the absolute contrast indications for new onset seizures are patients with known primary tumor, possible metastatic disease, new onset seizures unrelated to alcohol, trauma, or drugs, and especially with focal neurologic deficits. New onset seizures that are not traumatic in the adult have a stronger contrast indication, whereas new onset seizures in the pediatric population is a less compelling indication for a single one-time seizure. In other words, for the first time seizure in a child, contrast is not necessarily indicated or needed. I would always use a CAT scan in the emergency room where the patient is sick and unlikely to be cooperative for a magnetic resonance scan, which takes longer. But avoid CT and or modulate the radiation dose in young pediatric patients and individuals of childbearing age. Why would you use contrast enhanced MRI over CT for generalized seizures? Well, it's got better sensitivity and inherent contrast resolution. Therefore, better detection for small lesions and for meningeal lesions. You don't have to give as much total volume. For MR, the standard volume would be about 20 cc's. For CT, 100 cc's. Lesions are less likely to hide underneath bone on MRI. This is known as beam hardening artifact on a CT. MR is just flat out better in the posterior fossa of the brain, as well as in the supratentorial brain. But the lower you go in the brain, the more disparate and superior MR is to CT in the detection of a serious problem. MRA is easier to add on to an examination than CTA because you can perform an MRA as an add-on to a contrast-enhanced MR without making another injection. Not possible with CT. You'll always have to make an additional separate injection. MR, but not CT, can assess brain function. In other words, it can assess the utilization of oxygen and the blood flow to the brain when you perform a certain function like wiggling your pinky or speaking or counting, which is frankly amazing. Finally, MR delivers no ionizing radiation. This is especially important in children or patients of childbearing age. Why would I prefer contrast-enhanced CT over MRI for generalized seizures? If the patient comes in through the emergency room where CT is more available and the patient can get on and off the table more quickly, or in the acute setting where the patient has life support devices, CT is just easier to do and more practical. Patients who can't cooperate or hold still, anytime you are suspicious for another reason of a calcific lesion or evaluating calcium in the brain. If the patient has known prior gadolinium allergy, which is the contrast agent utilized in magnetic resonance imaging, there is no cross reactivity between the MR contrast and the CT contrast agent. So if the patient has had a serious MR contrast reaction, they can still have a CT with contrast with the iodinated contrast media. And the converse is also true. A CT allergy to the iodinated contrast does not preclude MR with the gadolinium contrast. Finally, if the patient has kidney function that is severely compromised, in other words, a glomerular filtration rate of less than 30 and one other organ system that is insufficient or diseased, like the heart from congestive heart failure or the liver, then CT is probably a safer modality with contrast than MRI due to a very rare but serious systemic reaction called nephrogenic systemic fibrosis. When is low field open MRI 
preferred for generalized seizures. In young people who might be overweight or uncooperative, where you can stand next to them and soothe them to cooperate, and you can talk to them through the opening of the open MRI. In patients with severe claustrophobia, where there is some moderate or medium risk of a metal device in the patient heating for a low field produces a lower risk of inciting a temperature elevation in such a device than a high field MR system. Where it's geographically much closer to where the patient is and there's no high field available then low field MRI can do an excellent job in the brain in expert hands of the technician and the imaging expert. Let's talk about new onset seizures that are directly attributable to trauma, especially in people under age 18. Because of the unique acute nature of the setting and the fact that it's trauma, non-contrast CT is first for detection of blood, diffuse axonal injury or shear injury, fractures, subdurals, epidurals, subarachnoid hemorrhage. Non-contrast MR is used as a supplement only if non-contrast CT is negative and suspicion remains high for an underlying problem. New onset seizures indirectly attributable to trauma and or delayed by weeks to months. In other words, subacute to chronic seizures that follow an episode of trauma, non-contrast MRI, Non-contrast MRI is the preferred modality. Why? It shows delayed subdurals and epidurals better everywhere. And this is often the most serious concern. Well, you can see in seizures, the use of contrast in either MR or CT is not absolutely necessary. And the choice of whether to give contrast or whether to use MR or CT depends on some unique scenarios that we've presented to you, the clinician, and the radiologic expert to use as future guidelines and potential standards. A word of caution. If you are contemplating an MRI with contrast and the patient has serious kidney impairment and you suspect or know that the glomerular filtration rate is under 30 I would avoid MR with contrast unless you plan on dialyzing the patient. The potential reaction of nephrogenic systemic fibrosis can be fatal. On the other hand, if you have known anaphylaxis to any of the agents you're planning on using, whether it's an MR agent or a CT agent, you should reconsider your decision or premedicate the patient. I'm Dr. Pomerantz for the mentor series and this vignette regarding seizures and contrast is concluded but I look forward to seeing you in our next vignette on the role of contrast in brain trauma. Have a great day.